Okay, guys, uh, I'm Vikram Deshpande back again, this time to talk about osteomas. Here's an osteoma on this slide, and what I want you to pay attention to is these parallel lamella bone. This is one of the few bone tumors where you'll see well-formed lamella bone. So here's my approach to bone-forming tumors. If you see lamella bone, it's probably in all likelihood going to be an osteoma. There are exceptions, but they're very few. And of course, as you well know, there are exceptions to every rule. This is the differential diagnosis if you see more woven bone. And of course, the reason why we do all of this is because an osteoma is completely benign. And so is an osteoid osteoma. So is an osteoblastoma. The only malignant tumor here is an osteosarcoma. Now I know traditionally fibrous dysplasia and osteofibrous dysplasia are not classified as bone forming tumors, but they produce enough bone and I link these with bone forming tumors. This of course is again benign. So a bit of demographic data. This is found over a pretty wide age range, and many of them are detected incidentally. Slightly more common in men than in women, but there isn't that great a difference. This is a key point. The overwhelming majority of these are found in craniofacial bones. So if you practice head and neck pathology, you will see one of these now. You may see these in other bones as well, and you may see them in long bones. So don't be surprised if you see them in a long bone. All right, so time for a very key point. And the key point here to remember is that by definition, an osteoma occurs on the surface of the bone. It almost has this stuck on appearance as if someone has taken this round thing and just placed it on the surface of the inner table. Of course, you can have osteomas on the outer table and you can have osteomas growing into the sinuses as well. Now, this is an osteoma, obviously at a somewhat uncommon location. This is in one of the long bones. But again, you'll notice it has the same density as the cortical bone. In fact, it's probably a little more dense than the cortical bone. And again, it has that stuck on appearance. So it's a surface lesion. By definition, again, an osteoma needs to be on the surface. And here's the corresponding gross. Here's a long bone. And you can see that the lesion here is sessile. So it has a relatively broad base. But again, it has that stuck on appearance. Think of seboric keratosis. From what I remember from decades ago, seboric keratosis also has that stuck on appearance. If I've got that wrong, email me. Now this is histologically speaking, a very easy diagnosis because it is made up in most cases of mature lamella bone specifically it looks like cortical bone in the sense it has these aversion canals and then the osteocytes embedded in the bone again notice this very lamella bone now you could mistake this for normal cortical bone except that i think there is a bit of remodeling going on so the canals are not placed quite right and there are areas that are somewhat similar and of course I think what is important here, and this applies to all of orthopedic pathology, you do need the clinical context. And once you see this stuff coming out of something stuck on the surface of the bone, that by definition is an osteoma. Now you would not consider an osteosarcoma here because the osteocytes have zero, zero atypia. A slightly higher power, again, you can see these aversion canals the lamella bone, here are the lamellae, uh, and the osteocytes, which look like virtually nothing. Of course, a substantial number of osteocytes have dropped out. Does, this does not mean this is dead bone. Instead, this is probably just over decalcification. A resident left it in decal for perhaps a couple of days too long. 
There's one variant of osteoma that might look slightly different to your eye, and this is the spongiest type. It has, of course, these thick seams of bone, like an osteoma would have, but there's a little more marrow here, this loose, slightly edematous, collagenized marrow. I think you might think that mistake this for a osteoblastoma or an osteoid osteoma, but you really shouldn't because those are lesions in the bone, not on the surface of the bone like an osteoma. But you'll also notice that most osteoblastomas and osteomas have a lot of osteoblastic rimming. So you'll have osteoblasts here, you'll have a fair number of scattered osteoclasts. This bone has neither, neither osteoblast nor osteoclast and looks very quiescent. So that quiescent appearance is very typical of an osteoma. All right, time to test your knowledge. Do you see the lesion? Well, it's right there. This is a plain film, but you could see that the uh, density is roughly the same. Perhaps it's slightly more dense than the underlying ribs. And it seems to be involving this rib right here. So there's the lesion again. Here's the CT scan. And again, you can see this very ivory white dense lesion involving the rib. And I know you don't get a really good look at it, but you'll have to take my word for it. This was on the surface of this rib, right? So again, it has that stuck on appearance. And here's the histology of the lesion. Isn't this a great section? I'm gonna claim it as my own. Uh, so here's the underlying rib. And you'll notice that this lesion is stuck on the surface and it looks like mature bone even at this power. This is an osteo osteoma, even at this power. Again, the, notice that there's very little going on in terms of osteoclastic and osteoblastic rimming, and the marrow space is barely visible. Intermediate power, again, showing what looks like mature bone with very little osteoblastic or osteoclastic activity. And if you didn't believe me, here's an even more high power look, again, showing this very quiescent, almost mature looking bone. So here's another very key point to remember. If you say the same histology, if you see the same histology within the bone, within the medullary cavity of the bone, that lesion is referred to as a bone island. The same thing on the surface of the bone as we talked about is referred to as an osteoma. So histologically identical location different, we give it two different names. And here's a bone island. Notice it is within the medullary cavity. Here's one, and it has the same density as the overlying cortical bone here. Here's another, so a tufa, dense, intramedullary lesion. Here's the gross from that femur from right here. Here it is. And you can see it looks like dense cortical bone, but sitting in the middle of cancellous bone. And it seems to sort of create these little tentacles that goes into the adjacent cancellous bone. And here's the histology of that bone island. Notice again, it is in the middle of the cancellous bone. There's some marrow. Here you go, it looks like mature cortical bone, but is like, uh, like identified on the gross specimen. It's throwing off these little tentacles. It's, this is very typical of a bone island. These are incidental lesions, totally benign, and you will not see resection specimens or biopsies from these individuals. With the exception when is the only exception to that rule is when you get a femoral head and you slice it open to find something like this. All right, let's talk about differential diagnosis. And differential diagnosis number one is a surface lesion, but a surface lesion that is malignant. So this is a parosteal osteosarcoma. You can see that it's clearly on the surface of the bone 
but histologically, these are completely different. Now, this parosteloosteosarcoma does, it's trying to create these lamellae, isn't it? But look at what's going on in the marrow. It's much more cellular and much more atypical. So an osteoma should show zero atypia, if at all you find any spindle-shaped cells, which you generally do not. So it's a relatively easy differential diagnosis. Any atypia in that marrow space, think parosteal osteosarcoma. And differential diagnosis number two is an osteoid osteoma or an osteoblastoma, another bone-forming tumor, except as we talked about earlier in this presentation, both of those lesions show a fairly brisk osteoblastic rimming, scattered osteoclasts, and most importantly, don't don't forget this. Most importantly, both these lesions are either intracortical or intramedullary. An osteoma, by definition, is a surface lesion. And that's it. Um, thanks for watching. And if you're interested in bone, soft tissue, or GI YouTube videos, subscribe to my channel. There's the link right there. Do send me your comments as well. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again and bye-bye.